Hey everybody, I'm Allie, and today I will be doing a review on the tugboat by Flawless. Check her out. How sweet she. So, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so it's going to be short and sweet. Um, you put juice in it and it gets really hot and produces some vapor. Okay, well, remember to vape like a rock star. Okay, bye! Thanks to Allie Vape for that quick little uh, short and sweet review of the tugboat. Thank you, baby. Um, now we'll jump into the, uh, the real review. Uh, so we'll go down up close first. Uh, we'll throw a build in it and then we'll uh, We'll talk about it, do some pros and cons. All right, real quick, up close and personal look at the Tugboat RDA by Flawless. Uh, you have a matching drip tip that is included with the purchase of a Tugboat. Uh, you see there is serialized, has the Tugboat logo, has those little three rings that match the top cap. There is your main logo on the Tugboat, laser engraved. 306 stainless steel, dual 3 30 seconds of an inch airflow, and the American flag on the back. I have the brushed version. Um, this is a 22 millimeter device. Will look nice and flush on all your standard 22 millimeter mods. Um, it has a reduced chamber. Uh, see that lip in there that sits down on top of the deck and it gives it that reduced chamber there's a bit of a bell there's a curvature inside there it doesn't really come through that great on camera um, gives you a nice warm vape good flavor even with that big airflow I love it the drip tip is a true wide bore drip tip it has a Delrin sleeve going about halfway. You can kind of tell where it ends inside this stainless steel. Um, and that prevents heat transfer. Uh, I haven't had this drip tip get hot on me. It's getting a little warm occasionally when I chain vape a lot. Um, but I love this drip tip. It's really awesome. It feels nice on uh, the draw is nice um, because it's silly to have big airflow here but not big airflow here you know why open up one end of the operation and not open up the other so I really like this combination right here it's really good looking I like it very solid very well machined I looked this over up and down when I bought it no burrs uh, I couldn't find anything wrong with it. on to the business end of the operation here is the build deck. Uh, you'll notice you have tri-post, standard tri-post, but with a pretty deep juice well. You know, look at that. I can't even really get my fat finger down and touch the bottom. So deep. Uh, a peak insulator. Uh, I've been going pretty hard on this thing. I was all the way down to 0.09 ohm. Dry fire and dry fire and, and nothing's melting. Um, pretty good sized post holes. You'll notice the center post is just a smidge higher than the outside posts makes it a little bit of an easier build um, you see that little white tuft sticking out of that o-ring right there that's dental floss that's how i fix the leakiness put a wrap and a half of dental floss around it put the o-ring back on and it's much better about being leaky because it's just that single o-ring so that's not very cool. Uh, I think it would have been a lot better design with two O-rings. There's your 510 connection, buttery smooth threads, non-adjustable stainless steel. Now the new versions do have a copper uh, connection and a copper center post for a little bit better conductivity. There's your serial number. I am the owner of 4955. You'll see that it matches the drip tip, which is pretty neat. Because um, I feel like this laser engraving is you can't really see it but I feel like it's starting to rub off uh, a little bit just from you see that ring around the entire thing from screwing on and off of devices I 
think that might rub off eventually. Just my opinion. Um, but everything's really well machined. You've got these big old fat Phillips heads. My only complaint, other than the fact that I think it needs two O-rings, is that these screws are kind of short. Oh, and it's out. They're a little bit short. They really are. They probably look even shorter in my big old fingers. Um, but they could stand to be a little longer. Like a half a millimeter longer would be nice. It really would. Because uh, I feel like to get a good connection, you got to crank these things all the way down to where they won't go any further. Uh, so yeah, in my opinion, uh, maybe on the next version, Flawless, make these a little longer. Just a smidgen. Um, but I love her anyway. Anyway, It's like, uh, I think Ruby Roo said, it's like that that ex-lover you have that so many things, there's, there's a, something wrong with it, but you just can't help but love it. And you keep coming back to it. Uh, you see it fits down nice and flush inside there. Looks really good on a device. I just love the styling of it. I really do. So I can deal with that little bit of leakiness and those little bit of short screws. Because those are the only two flaws I've found at all. Would be nice if it had an adjustable pin. Um, I don't really care too much about the fact that the airflow is non-adjustable. Because it's almost a perfect draw for me. I could probably stand to drill it out a little bit. But I'm not going to. Because this was an $85 atomizer. So it will stay stuck. And I'm not going to do this to it like I did my Spirit. This is for clouds. This is for luxury and flavor. Alright, so let's jump into uh, building this bad boy, guys. Alright, so to do this build, uh, there are several necessary items. Of course, your atomizer. Let's set that to the side for a moment. 26 gauge canthal. Going to just be doing a dual macro coil. Um, with the 26 gauge. You will need some needle nose pliers. Um, I like these bent tip ones. Uh, just gives you like a little more ability to get in those little tight places with that bent tip. I like them. Some snips to cut canthal with. Some scissors for your cotton. Some cotton, organic cotton ball. Uh, this is what we will be using to tighten the posts and also to wrap our coils on. It's a three millimeter Phillips head uh, or the, the one, the number one Phillips head. Some tweezers to tuck cotton and pull cotton and just tweak and stuff. I like the bent tip again. And an ohm meter. This is what I should have said first, people. Get yourself an ohm meter. It's a necessity, not an accessory. You need this, you need to know battery safety. Go check out my Ohm's Law battery safety video. All right. Uh, you'll also need a mod of some sorts, some kind of uh, mechanism to fire the coils so you can pinch them, get hot spots out, and then eventually vape your build. So I have some Canthal that I pre torched. And the reason I torched my Canthal is to take the springiness out of it. I'll make it a little easier to work with. It holds its shape better. And it's just, you know, a lot easier to work with in general. Now I've found that uh, the best way to get a good tight coil is to get it tight as you wrap it. So just use a steady pressure, steady speed. Um, get it nice and tight as you go. And then you don't have to tweak it as much once it's installed. So I give myself a generous little piece to hold on to down here at the bottom. All right. Then I'll start doing my wraps. Got them nice and tight without overlapping. No kinks. Four. Five. Six. Seven. seven wraps on a three millimeter screwdriver. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap another one just like it and we'll be right back. 
So there we have our two macro coils. And we will begin to install them in our RDA. So what I like to do is put a little bit of a bend to these coils when going into this tugboat because that deep juice well makes it a little bit fussy to get coils into without that bend. Make sure your posts or your screws are backed out a little bit. Then insert the leg that's going over into the center post and the leg that's going under into the outside post. Dun, 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 dun. Like so. All right. Now we will set the depth of this right there. Looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit longer than we can center the build. And we will tighten that down, that outside leg. Just like that. Nice and tight, but not over tight because you don't want to crank it down too much and then shear that wire off and have to rebuild your coil. So, now we will put a little bit of a bend to these legs. You'll notice one of these is far too long. We'll snip that off. One leg a little shorter than the other. So you only have to guide one leg through at a time. Now we will get this through that center post. Like so. Then we can guide that other leg. Right on through there. All right. Now, you want your coils to be the same distance away from the posts. All right, looking good. Now we can crank everything down, cut those leads, and start to clean everything up. All right. I'll go in and I'll snip these leads off. Like that. A little bit too much there. And I just like to use a flat head. push those leads up nice and close to the post, get them out of the way of our cotton, like so. All right, so there we have the makings of a nice little dual coil. So I'll stick my screwdriver in there and pull out to tighten that up. Turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Let's see what we are reading here. That is voltage. Point four. All right, nice. Sub ohm. But it's still pretty safe. As long as you have a 30 amp battery, you are perfectly safe with this build. Uh, remember, go back and check out my Ohm's Law battery safety video. If you're into rebuilding, you need to stay safe, people. You don't want a battery venting while your mod is in your hand, or at all, really. A battery venting is not fun. So now what we're going to do is we're going to throw this on our mod and work out any possible hot spots. All right, got it on my mod. Unlock it. And see what we're working with here. Uh, where 
Alrighty, alrighty. One of them's looking pretty good. The other one's looking like it's got a little bit of a hot spot on the outside there. So what we'll do is go in and pinch that tight while it's hot. Like so. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Try and get these lined up and pretty looking. go heating up evenly from the inside out that's exactly what you want looking good looking good looking good so now cool that off a little bit and we can wick less is more so we pull ourselves off a nice piece kind of start to roll it up. Don't roll it up too tight. You don't want it too tight. You a nice firm fit in the coil. That would be too tight. So we'll just roll that right on up. Push that right through that coil. And kind of spin it as we go in. And I like to tease it back and forth to make it fluff up inside that coil so it's nice and held in there firm but not too tight all right we'll firm some of this off like so and again on the other side like that so that's kind of what we're looking for right there all right and we do the same thing on the other side and there we go now we can kind of tuck all that down inside and I like to bring it around in front of the coil and tuck it down underneath it just like that bada boom bada bang And we'll do the same thing over here. There you go. Your tugboat is built and wicked. Now the only thing left to do is juice it up. Go back out to the main screen and talk about it. Today we're going to use a little bit of Unicorn Blood by Fusion Vapor. Just kind of start to... This is a wrong word, but it's what I say. I don't know. It might not be the wrong word. To caramelize that, those coils. Uh, and that's another good thing about torching your canthal before building your coils is you kind of get some of that fresh canthal taste off that wire. Let's screw it down real nice. And we'll see what she's got. Now, this is not going to be a massive cloud build. It's really not. Kind of geared a little bit more towards a little bit cooler, a little more flavorful. But she looks to be doing all right. So there was my uh, up close and my build on the tugboat um, pros the drip tip is awesome doesn't get hot because of that Delrin it's got a s sweet logo and the serial number is on it it's pretty cool it looks good feels good right here um, true wide bore nice airflow uh, you're not going to need to drill this airflow out for all but the, like the craziest of builds it's got two three thirty second airflows I like it I like the looks of it this brushed finish is really nice um, the, the laser etched logos are really nice. Um, the price is not bad for a high-end authentic, 85 bucks. 
Uh, you can get these at Local Vape. They have all the options. They have all the colored ones. They have the different state editions. Um, just, just a pretty awesome atomizer overall. Um, I haven't had it, any issues with it fitting on my devices. The machining is top notch. Uh, so yeah, lots of lots of pros for this one. Um, cons: the O-ring situation, the leakiness. Uh, you could have put a bigger O-ring on their flaws. You could have put two O-rings on there for us. Um, you know, and then this device would have been stellar. Like there would have been no flaws really. Uh, a con for me, I think that the screws should have been just a little bit longer, and that's about it. A little bit longer screws, uh, and definitely a fix for that O-ring situation. Two O-rings or even a, a fatter O-ring. One of the two. Um, with this build and this mod, because this Magneto has horrendous voltage drop for sure. So I'm definitely not getting as much power to this device as I could be. The, the clouds aren't really there. I know they can be. I've put this Addy on top of some of my friends' devices, like a Pegasus, um, and it just chucks the vapor. It really does. Uh, the flavor is on point with that reduced chamber. I like it a lot, man. Solid atomizer. Definitely recommend it, uh, especially if you want one of those state edition ones or the colored ones. Um, those are really nice looking. I want to snap up one of the Tennessee ones for sure. But she vapes like a dream. She does. Uh, I like it. Love this tugboat. Alright guys, that was my take on the Tugboat RDA by Flawless. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Check out the update video. You'll get a little bit of an idea of what we got going on. Uh, we're going to do a 500,000 or a 500 subscriber giveaway. Uh, we're only 180 people away from that. We have like three bottles of juice already. Uh, a stack of stickers, an 18650 battery, and we're going to be adding stuff to that all the time. Um, so, you know, we hope we get the subscribers quicker, but the longer it takes, the more stuff we'll get into that box. Also, you can follow me on Instagram, at Rockstar Vapes. I post a lot of different pictures. I do, you know, the hand checks, some different build pictures, some little cloud videos, all sorts of stuff, uh, share giveaways. Uh, we'll eventually start doing some giveaways on Instagram that are like Instagram exclusive. Uh, you can follow Allie at Allie Vape, uh, Ginger at Ginger Vape. Check out our Facebook page, it's Rockstar Vape, so give us a like. We have a Twitter account. Uh, you can tweet us at Rockstar Vapes, Allie runs that. Uh, and if you're not a CASA member, Please go join CASA right now. It only takes a few minutes of your time, and it'll really help us out. These FDA regulations are coming down pretty soon, and we really need to stick together and be united on this. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with a bunch of Sigalikes that are made by Philip Morris. And then, honestly, you might as well just go back to the, the, uh, the, the coffin nails, the cancer sticks. So it's time for everybody to band together, jump on these calls to action, join up with CASA. It doesn't cost you any money, though it would be good if you donate. Uh, me and Allie donate. So, you know, five bucks a month, it's not a lot, but it helps. Um, it's what we can afford right now. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, remember, vape like a rock star.